Nancy and Mike were going to the Carnival of Riddles, which was scheduled to be in their town during the weekend. It was a very popular carnival that was traveling the country, and everybody was so excited. So, when they arrived, they saw a very long line, and it seemed like they had to wait for many hours to be able to get in. But the ticket salesman left his booth and walked in front of the crowd. He said that he was going to give a riddle to everyone. Since this was the carnival of riddles, those who could answer correctly would be able to get inside earlier than others. The riddle was this. I am the beginning of eternity. I am the end of time and space. I am the start of every end. I am the end of every place. What am I? The answer is the letter E. Nancy and Mike were so happy that they knew the answer and didn't have to wait to get in. But even though they were able to move in front of the line, they still had to pay for the tickets. But they were so expensive. The salesman offered them another riddle. If they could answer it, he would give them a 50% discount. I have an X number of candy apples. If I count them by threes, the remainder is two. If I count them by fives, the remainder is three. If I count them by sevens, the remainder is two. How many candy apples do I have? Mike was kind of a genius, so he knew the answer immediately. Do you? The answer is 23. Nancy and Mike were glad to have been able to save some cash to buy snacks. Nancy wanted to get something sweet for herself and her brother, so they went to the candy booth. They had three options to choose from. They could either buy cotton candy, candy cane, or a candy apple. Which one should they pick? Take a closer look at the cotton candy. There's a teeny tiny spider stuck inside. Yikes! And did you notice that little apple worm inside the candy apple? That's never good. So, they should buy the candy cane. Before leaving the candy booth, Mike wanted to get a gumball too. However, when he inserted his coin into the gumball vending machine, he realized that something was strange. Hey. Do you see it too? Look inside the machine carefully. Not everything in there is a gumball. This and that are eggs. How weird is that? Hey! After eating their candy, they came upon a tent with a sign that said, Enter if you want to see real magic. They were intrigued, so they decided to walk in. There were three different magicians. The first was holding cards in his hands. Then he made them disappear. The second one also had cards, but he was making them levitate. And the third one put a pen through a card, but the card was unharmed after. Only one of them was capable of real magic, and the others were just doing tricks. Can you tell who? Take a closer look at the first magician's sleeves. You can see a corner of the card. He didn't make them disappear, he just hid them. The second magician's cards are attached to a clear thread. You can notice it from where the sunlight hits. So the third one is the real deal. Mike was a fan of all things scary, so he convinced his sister to take the haunted house ride. As their cart moved inside the dark tunnel, they encountered three different monsters along the way. A zombie, a ghost, and a mummy. Little did they know that one of them was a real monster. Can you tell which one? Take a look at the zombie. Its makeup is kind of melting, which means that it must be an actor. As for the mummy, look at his ankle. His skin slightly shows under all that mummy gauze. So he must be a dressed up actor as well. That makes the ghost the real monster. So creepy. Nancy didn't enjoy the haunted house ride. She wanted her next ride to be something relaxing. So she chose the carousel. Mike decided to skip this one to explore the carnival more. They agreed to meet later. 
When Nancy arrived at the carousel, she saw that all the horse seats were taken, except three. But only one of them looked safe to sit on. Which one is that? The second horse mount is cracked. It's not wise to pick that one. And the third horse is slowly moving back and forth even though the carousel is not rotating yet. Its screws must be loose or something. So, she should choose the first one. It's the cutest one anyway. As Nancy was enjoying the carousel, Mike decided to check out the Hall of Mirrors. The information board said that only one person was allowed inside. Mike entered and had so much fun enjoying all the funny reflections of himself on the weird mirrors. But then, suddenly, he screamed with fear. Why is that? Take a closer look at the mirror reflections. One of them doesn't belong to Mike. So, he is apparently not the only one inside, even though the sign said he would be. Mike was so scared of the unexpected reflection, he ran out of the Hall of Mirrors immediately. But as he did, he tripped on a stone and twisted his ankle. So, he decided to visit the first aid tent to get some ice. When he walked in, he saw that the nurse was in panic and in no condition to help him out because there were three pregnant women sitting in front of her, all claiming they were going to give birth now. However, Mike noticed that one of them was lying and faking her pregnancy. Can you tell who? Girl number three is clearly the liar. Take a look at the ultrasound picture in her hand. It has the first girl's name on it. She must have stolen it from her, so she's only pretending to be pregnant. Once the real pregnant ladies left for the hospital, Mike was able to get some ice for his ankle and went to meet his sister. At that moment, they heard an announcement coming from the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, gather up to see the strongest man alive. Don't believe me? I'm not lying. Here he comes. See him with your own eyes. Nancy and Mike wanted to see who this man was, so they joined the crowd. A muscular-looking man entered the stage. He said, I will prove to you how strong I am by breaking this thing with my bare hands. But first, you have to guess what it is. Here is my riddle to you. There was a greenhouse. Inside the greenhouse, there was a white house. Inside the white house, there was a red house. Inside the red house, there were lots of little ones. Nancy knew the answer, so she yelled it out. Can you guess? It's a watermelon, and the strongman was able to break it with his bare hands indeed. So cool! Nancy and Mike were tired, so they decided to call it a day and go home. But before that, they wanted to get a souvenir from the carnival. They picked a beautiful fridge magnet. When they paid for it, the gift shop salesman put three cups upside down on the table and placed their money under one of them. He said he would give their money back and the magnet for free if they could guess which cup had their money after he performed his trick. Watch carefully. Nancy knew where the money was immediately. How about you? It's here. You thought it was under this one, right? Watch it in slow motion again. Do you see the salesman putting the money under that one with a quick hand movement? Nancy noticed that. What a fun day. Jaden bought a beautiful ring for his girlfriend. He wanted to propose to her at the weekend. He left the ring on his desk at home and went to work. But when he got back in the evening, he didn't find the ring. Only his three sisters were at home that day, and all of them didn't like his girlfriend. He went to question each of them. Mia was in her room. She said she had spent the whole day there painting the walls. Emily was in the kitchen. She answered she had been cooking a birthday cake for her friend. And the youngest, Nora, was in the garden. She said she had been planting roses. It didn't take Jaden long to figure out who had taken the ring. Do you know who it was? (laughs) 
It was Nora. She looks too tidy after spending the entire day in the garden. Plus, she doesn't have any garden tools. Carter's literally running home from school. He has a piece of cake waiting for him there. But as soon as the boy opens the fridge, he realizes someone's eaten his cake. It can only be his elder sister, Maya. He sees her leaving the bathroom. How could you? I've been dreaming about this cake for the whole day. What are you talking about? I came home half an hour ago. I immediately got in the shower and just finished. Carter isn't convinced. His sister's hair is completely dry. Maya is both telling the truth about the shower and lying about not eating the cake. How is it possible? The girl did get in the shower, but she didn't turn the water on. She was just sitting there and eating the cake. Someone stole the money Adam kept in his safe. Oh my god. The police questioned three suspects. Julia said she'd gone to bed at 10 p.m. and fallen asleep right away. Parker told the detective he'd been watching TV from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. And Aiden had said he'd been at his friend's playing computer games all night. The police immediately arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Parker. He was very specific about the time. The best player of Julian's volleyball team disappeared right before the game. Julian suspected three players from the rival team. Jackson said, I've just returned from the gym. I was warming up before the competition. Leo had to pick up his wife with her daughter from the hospital. And Ryan claimed he'd fractured his leg, and the team doctor was giving him a massage. Who's behind the player's disappearance? It's Ryan. Getting a massage when your leg's broken? Really? A rich businessman called the police Uh and said a precious vase from his collection had gone missing. When the detective arrived, he found out the businessman had just returned from his overseas trip. While he was away, a security guard was looking after the house. The man was questioned. It happened last night. I was in the same room with the vase reading. Suddenly, the power went out. I heard the doorbell ring and hurried to open the door, but there was no one outside. When I came back, the vase was gone. The detective didn't believe the security guard and arrested him. Why? The doorbell can't ring if there's no electricity. Caroline went for a walk to the park. Deep in her thoughts, the girl wasn't really looking where she was going. That's why she didn't notice a pit in the ground and fell into it. When she came around, she found herself in a strange room. There were no windows, no door. In the dim light, the girl saw a table with three apples on it. And was it a note? To get out of this trap, you've got to eat an apple. But only one of them isn't poisoned. Pick carefully. Caroline was terrified. But after examining the apples, she bravely bit into one of them, and nothing bad happened. Which apple did she choose? The girl chose the apple with the worm peeking out of it. If this creature can eat the fruit, a human can too. Mary worked as a maid in a rich family. Once, they left for a one-week vacation. The girl stayed alone and looked after the house. When her employers returned, the wife discovered that two of her diamond rings had gone missing. The woman called the police and accused Mary of taking the jewelry. Can you help the girl prove she has nothing to do with the theft? Mary was probably not very attentive while cleaning the house. One of the rings is under the sofa, the other in the bucket. It was the first day of school when the principal's wallet went missing. There were three suspects, the gardener, the math teacher, and the coach. 
Here's what they said. The gardener was mowing the front yard. The math teacher was checking the surprise test he'd given his students. And the coach was meeting new people who wanted to join the school's soccer team. Who took the wallet? It was the math teacher. Nobody gives surprise tests on the first day of school. Landon's mother is going to visit her relatives in another town. Before leaving, she enters her son's room to say goodbye. Oh my, it's a terrible mess. And the boy's playing games on his phone. The woman takes the gadget away and locks it in her safe. I'll tell you the password only after you send me a photo of your room, tidy and squeaky clean. She's at the railway station when Landon sends her the photo. She's happy at first, before she realizes it's an old one. How did she understand it? The date on the departure board at the station is December 20th, 2020. But it's July 5th, 2019 on the calendar in Landon's room. Logan is a special agent who's trying to catch a notorious villain. After long months of investigation, he finds the criminal's headquarters. But the door is locked, which is not a surprise, really. Logan sees a screen next to the entrance. He touches it, and the display lights up. Mmm, it must be a riddle. Our special agent needs to solve it to get inside. Add one line to make it right. 9.5 9.5 equals 10, 10, 10. Logan cracks the puzzle in no time. What's the answer? Nine point five equals 10 to 10. The door opens and the man steps into a dark corridor. After walking some time, Logan notices a door. Ah, a code lock again. That's when the man also spots a calendar hanging on the wall. At the bottom, there are several letters, M, F, W. After connecting the dots, the special agent figures out the code. What is it? It's 153. The letters stand for the days of the week, Monday, Friday, and Wednesday. Monday is the first day, Friday the 5th, and Wednesday the 3rd one. The door swings open and Logan sees a room. There's not much inside, just an old mattress, several half-rotten fruits in the corner, a small knife half-hidden under the mattress, and a water dispenser with a bottle of water on top of it. The villain must have kept someone here. Anyway, there are four doors leading out of the room. Behind the first one, there's a mother bear with a cub. The second one leads to a lake with hungry crocodiles. Behind the third door, there's a room filled with toxic gas. And the fourth door hides a wall of fire. With his special training, Logan doesn't need much time to choose the door and leave the room. Which one does he pick? The third one. The agent empties the water bottle. Then he uses the knife to cut it in such a way that his head fits in. His scarf helps prevent the toxic air from entering the bottle. He runs into a room. In the corner, Logan sees a staircase. It leads to the basement. Down there, there are three men. Each of them is tied to a chair and claims that one of the other two is the villain. They tell Logan they've been locked in there for at least four days. The special agent looks at the men attentively and soon figures out who the criminal is. Can you do the same? The villain is the man on the left. Four days have passed, but he has no stubble whatsoever. Case solved. Allison is a big boss in an international company. One day, she's hurrying to an important meeting when she notices the documents she needs haven't been printed out. But she's asked at least three of her subordinates to do it. Ian says he's just returned from the supermarket because they've run out of coffee beans. Robert claims he's been terribly busy drafting a new contract. 
and Alice answers she's been in the kitchen, preparing snacks and making coffee for the meeting. Who's actually forgotten about the task and making up excuses at the last moment? It's Alice. There's no coffee in the office. Then how could she make it? Uh Uh-huh. One Sunday, Tom told his brother Dan that he was going hiking with his friend Chris. The next Saturday, the police found Tom unconscious in the forest. Dan said he had been working all week. As for Chris, he was found wandering along the highway. He explained that he had gotten lost in the forest almost immediately after they had arrived and just found his way home. One of the guys was lying. Who was it? Look at Chris. He's too well-shaven for a man who spent a week in the woods. There are five girls in the room. Ashley is drawing, Olivia is reading, Maria is playing hide-and-seek, and Emma is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide-and-seek with Maria, of course. What number is missing? A small hint, it's not number 4. Number 5 is missing. The subsequent number of 234 is 235. In the small town of Sunshine Valley, three teachers went on a sick leave all on the same day. Jenna says she got into a car accident and broke her leg, so she can't walk. Emma complained she had a very unfortunate workout and injured her neck, so she can't turn her head. And Tina says she fell from a bike and fractured her arm. But one of them is lying. Can you tell who? It's Jenna. If she can't walk, why does she even have a crutch to hold her up? If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? Nope, in 72 hours, it's going to be night again. In the room, there are two people, both of them sitting. But if one of them stands up, they won't be able to take the other one's place whatever they do. How is that possible? The second person is sitting on the first one's lap. A father tells his teenage daughter, You arrived very late at 3 a.m. and made us all worry a lot. I don't want this situation to repeat. His daughter, though, replies that it will never happen again. How can she be so sure? The father was talking about the birth of his daughter. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that he knew didn't cost anything. He was an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting costs nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. A street food vendor has a sign on his stall saying, One hot dog, one and a half dollars. Three hot dogs, five dollars. He knows it's more expensive to buy three, but doesn't change his sign. Why? Each time a customer saw his sign, they would buy one hot dog, then another, and then a third one totaling up to $4.50. Thus, everyone's happy. The customers think they're clever, and the vendor gets his sales up. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police that he wanted to save a bag of money, but he had to crouch to tie his boot just in front of the emergency exit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. 
When he came to, the hmm? money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? Well, all emergency doors open outwards. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong to the rest. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out? It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full, but your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches the rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Sam and his brother John were always fighting. Their mother couldn't take it anymore and came up with a clever plan to stop them. She told the boys to stand on the same piece of paper in such a way that they didn't touch each other, and it worked. The boys couldn't fight anymore. How did she do it? The woman slipped the paper under a closed door and made Sam stand on one side and John on the other. There is a bridge that is one mile long. It can hold only 5,000 pounds at one time. That's exactly the weight of the truck that's crossing it. The truck reaches the middle of the bridge and stops. Suddenly, a bird lands on the truck. Is the bridge going to collapse? The bridge isn't going to break down, because the truck has already used some gas to get to the middle, and therefore weighs less than 5,000 pounds. A young woman is sitting near the window. At first, she's deep in thought. Then, she suddenly decides to throw something out of the window. A couple minutes later, she drops on the floor unconscious. She's perfectly healthy and isn't prone to sudden faints. There was no one outside to have hit her either. So, what happened? She was knocked out by the very same thing she'd thrown out the window. It was a boomerang that came back and hit her on the head. Well, that was a dumb thing to do. Two men are in a room facing each other. One of the men is a psychic and can see into the future. He predicts that in 10 minutes, the other man will be hit on the back of his head. Of course, shocked and paranoid, the other man can't stop staring at the clock on the wall. And exactly 10 minutes later, he's lying face down on the floor. How could it happen? After 10 minutes, the man turned around to see if there was anyone behind him. At exactly that moment, the psychic hit him on the back of his skull. Well, I'm starting to think he wasn't a psychic after all. You walk up to the edge of a forest when suddenly you see a man in swimming trunks, goggles, and a snorkel going out of the thicket and falling on the ground as if exhausted. But you know the nearest body of water is several miles away. How did the weird man end up in the forest? There was a huge forest fire, and the plane that was extinguishing it had to scoop up water from the lake several miles away. Doing it, it accidentally captured the man snorkeling in the lake. He was dropped down together with the water and miraculously survived. Upon receiving an anonymous tip, the police rushed to a house where a suspect was said to be. They have no physical description, but they do know his name is John. When the cops reached the place, They see four people sitting at a table. A carpenter, a firefighter, a truck driver, and a mechanic. None of which have name tags on their uniforms. Without a moment's hesitation, they arrest the firefighter. 
So how did they know that's their guy? The firefighter was the only man in the room. All the others at the table were women and couldn't be named John. A man and his wife are driving down a highway when they run out of gas. So the husband decides to walk to the nearest gas station, which is about an hour's walk away. Before he heads off, he tells his spouse to stay in the car and lock all the doors and windows. The wife, bored and wanting to entertain herself, turns on the radio only to hear some shocking news. A notorious criminal has escaped from prison and was last seen on that very highway where the car is sitting. The reporter on the news gives a very detailed description of the escapee. The wife gets so scared that she quickly turns off the radio. She double-checks all the locks, but when she looks up, she sees the escapee just a few feet away from the car. When the man returns, he finds the car still all locked up, but his wife is nowhere to be seen. How is it possible? The answer is simple. The couple had been driving a convertible with the top down, and the woman wasn't, dare we say, terribly bright. An adventurer found a treasure chest in a cave that was guarded by a pirate. He had three keys, gold, silver, and black. But only one of them could open the chest. The pirate would give the adventurer only one chance to reach the treasure. If he chose the right key, he could take the chest. If he chose incorrectly, the pirate would attack him. Arr! The only clue was this cipher. Which is the right key? The cipher is an anagram. Shuffle the letters a bit and you'll get the golden key. The adventurer went away unscathed and the pirate was left frustrated and treasureless. Wow! While working late at night in a top-secret laboratory, Michael finally managed to create the DNA of a hybrid monstrous creature. After all that hard work, he decided to grab a quick coffee and donut as a little reward. But he came back and saw that the specimen had disappeared from the incubator. Hmm. Michael lined up Ryan, Jeff, and Laura and confronted them. Who took an important top-secret piece of research I was working on? Ryan said he'd been busy doing some additional research on a separate project and had no idea what was going on. Jeff said he hadn't touched the hybrid creature and had been in the archives digging through some files he needed. And Laura said she'd been in the bathroom the whole time. So who took the specimen? Michael never mentioned that he was dealing with a hybrid monstrous creature. Jeff just let himself get caught. Better think smart next time. Anne absolutely loathes winter. But just like anyone else, she has to go out and do stuff. She had just moved to a snowy city for work and experiences some of the coldest winters. But she managed to make it to the mall to do some quick shopping through a huge blizzard. When she came back to her parked car, she discovered that someone broke into it and took her belongings. When the police lined up the three suspects, they each gave their stories. Francesca said she had been polishing her car outside and didn't know anything. Ned said he had been shopping for clothes, and Earl said he had been sitting in a cafe on the upper floor of the mall. The police arrested the suspect. Who was it? Francesca. She was polishing her car outside in the middle of a blizzard? That's not only illogical, but not safe either. She just gave herself away. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You don't have enough time to choose which door leads to freedom. You hear a monster coming, so you check out the doors quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, it's the right door. The third door has a sign, 
freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? The last door. It says not to trust the signs, but it doesn't mean that they're lying. The first door says to take the door on the right. Not necessarily the last door on the right, but just the one on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the right door, as in the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? So it's the last door on the right that leads to freedom. Mason was extremely happy when he got the news that his sister Jane was coming to town. He had just started a new job and couldn't wait to host her for the first time. She was only able to see some nice pictures of the places he visited, including where he lived. When he picked her up from the airport, he noticed something slightly off about her. She was robotic with her responses and seemed stiff with her movements. She wouldn't eat and only insisted that she wanted to rest up. Strange. Had he been watching too much sci-fi? After a while, Mason hears a knock on the door, and to his surprise, it's Jane. But I thought… Jane tells him that the Jane in his apartment is an imposter. When the Jane in the bedroom goes out and sees the other Jane sitting on the couch, they're both in shock. They both try to convince Mason that they're the real Jane. But who will Mason believe? It's pretty normal to come back from a trip pretty tired and wanting to rest. But how did the second Jane know where Mason lived without prior knowledge? And she didn't even break a sweat running up to the apartment. On a nice day, Vivian, who lived in a town on the seashore, decided to go for a hike alone. But after hours of trekking, she ended up on a section of the forest she wasn't familiar with. Before her were three paths. One path had bear footprints leading away. Another had human shoe prints, and the third was right by the river. Which one should Vivian take to find her way? The river path. Since she lives in a coastal town, the river mouth most likely ends up in the sea. That way, she could figure out where she is. Melissa is sharing a train car with three other people. It's a very hot day, and the air conditioner doesn't even work. James starts complaining and only calms down after opening the window. Melissa lays down her red silk scarf her grandmother gave her next to her. Judith compliments it. Robert, a senior, mentions that he forgot to bring a gift for his wife who will pick him up from the train station. James has a crush on Judith. After a while, Melissa goes to the bathroom and comes back to find the scarf missing. Who was the one who took it? None of them. It was a hot day and James opened the window. The wind sent the scarf flying right out of it. Some zombies have Diego trapped in a room. They're surrounding him. He's stuck and can't escape. Their arms are breaking in and reaching for him. When Diego looks around, he realizes that he's in a small newspaper stand with magazines and pocketbooks. And looking around him more attentively, he finds a roll of tape nearby. How can he avoid those nasty bites? The only way for Diego to escape will be to tape those magazines around crucial parts of his body where they can't lay his teeth on him. It'll be light enough for him to run away from the zombies without getting hurt. Plus, he'll have plenty of reading material for the road. Evan got lost in a forest, and just his luck, it was snowing. The only thing the police searching for him found were four parallel lines leading into the forest. Something doesn't seem right, they thought, and took several people into questioning. 
Nick said he had been at the store buying some groceries. Vanessa said she had been babysitting. Christina had been at work the whole time. After hearing the stories, they arrested Nick. Why? Nick was in a wheelchair. The four parallel lines were left by Nick rolling into the forest and back out. It's the beginning of a new school year, and Dave started a new job as a computer studies teacher at a local high school. Another fellow teacher, Roy, didn't really welcome him because he wanted that position. But at the end of the day, there was a security breach which leaked out a lot of important information about the school. When the police questioned everyone, including Roy and Dave, they each gave their stories. Dave said, I was checking exam papers and was at the staff room the whole time. Roy said, I was preparing homework for my classes when everything happened. Who should the police arrest? Who was lying? Dave. There wouldn't be any exams on the first day of school. Gareth is in a pickle. He's at the police station looking at the lined-up suspects, one of whom stole Beth's bag while she was having a picnic in the park. He observes them. Beth describes the culprit as someone big, no hair, and wearing a black jacket. All the men lined up match the description. Gareth looks at each of them, and they all have one distinct trait that makes them stand out from each other. Suspect number one has a beard. Number two is wearing shorts. And number three is wearing glasses. Gareth knows immediately who to arrest. Who is it? Suspect number one has dirt all over his boots. The rest are all clean. He ran through the mud tracks while Beth was having a picnic. So a restaurant owner called the police and said a customer had stolen a large sum of money. When the police arrived, the restaurant security guard already had three suspects. Thomas said, I was just walking along the street. I didn't even enter your restaurant. Dylan was angry. I've never been to this place before. I was sitting in my car when that guy ran up to me and started throwing accusations. John said, I did visit the restaurant yesterday, but I just came in to get a coffee and didn't stay longer than five minutes. After listening to the suspects, the police arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Dylan. His car was parked in the place reserved for regular clients, but he claimed he'd never been to the restaurant before. Harrison was walking home when someone threw a bag over his head and knocked the guy out. When he came around, he found himself in a room with four doors and a tiny window. Harrison opened the window, but it was too small for him to squeeze through. Suddenly, the guy spotted a piece of paper lying on the floor. It was a note that said, Only one door leads outside. The other three don't lead anywhere. You can try to open just one door, and only once. If you don't succeed, all of them will get locked forever. Harrison thought for a while and made the right choice. How did he figure it out? He opened the window. This created a draft. The guy checked the keyholes and felt some cool air coming from one of them. It was the door to freedom. It was Sunday morning when a submarine captain found one of his sailors lying unconscious on his bunk. Someone had hit him on the head. It could only be another crew member. The captain had three suspects, Mateo, David, and Owen. He questioned them, and that's what they said. Mateo. I couldn't do it. I was checking the equipment in the machinery compartment. David. When it happened, I was washing dishes left after dinner. Owen. At that moment, I was busy posting a new video on TikTok. Who was lying?
It was Owen. People can't use the internet for personal purposes on submarines. Leo studied art in college and rented an apartment together with his friend Andrew. Leo had bad eyesight and was wearing his glasses at all times. One day, Andrew didn't notice Leo's glasses and accidentally sat on them. They were beyond repair. Leo was so furious, he shouted at his friend, and Andrew ran away. Leo called his girlfriend and asked her to give him a lift to the optician. He couldn't drive without his glasses. They were turning onto the main road when they spotted Andrew. He was lying in the bushes, unmoving. Leo immediately called the police and ambulance. Andrew was taken to a hospital, and a police officer started to question the witnesses. Leo told him, My girlfriend was behind the wheel when I spotted Andrew. We immediately stopped and called you. We didn't see anything suspicious. The police officer arrested Leo. Why? With such poor eyesight and without glasses, how could he notice Andrew lying in the bushes? Lily called the police. She found her neighbor, a famous artist, on the floor of his apartment. The unconscious man was quickly rushed to a hospital. The police had three suspects. Lily said, I live next door. I heard some shouting and loud bangs. I went to check on what was going on and found him on the floor. Zachary told the police the artist was his friend. We agreed to meet at the restaurant, and I came to give him a lift. And Cooper said, I ordered a painting from him, but when I came to pick it up, I saw the police. Who's guilty? It's Zachary. If they agreed to meet at the restaurant, why did he come to the artist's apartment? You wake up locked in a room with no windows and just one automatic door. Above the door, there's a large screen. Suddenly, it turns on. You hear a voice. It sounds muffled. Crack this riddle and you're free to go. If not, the room will be filled with toxic gas in five minutes. After that, you see the riddle. What could it mean? Hopefully, you'll realize in time that it means sitting on top of the world. Look at these mirrors and say which one is magical. It's the one the girl in the middle is holding. Apparently, it helped her get rid of her mole. A businessman's about to go through a security check at the airport when he realizes someone's taken his luggage. Airport security officers have three suspects. Anna says she doesn't need someone's old bag. She has her own, thank you very much. Mike answers he's a light traveler and doesn't have luggage. He keeps everything in his backpack. James says he's been in a car accident recently. His arm's broken and he has a sprained ankle. He can hardly carry anything. In no time, the security officers arrest the thief. Can you figure out who it is? It's Anna. Nobody told her the bag was old. Several police officers are following a criminal. He hid in a random house. When the officers entered the building, they saw a costume party was going on and the criminal pretended to be one of the guests. The police looked at the people and soon figured out who the criminal was. How did they understand it? It's the man in the black cape. Unlike other partygoers, he seemed to throw on everything he had at hand. Iron Man's helmet, Batman's cape, and Hulk's pants. Two young women disappeared one by one in a small town. The police found an envelope with a strange code in the first girl's apartment. In the second woman's house, they discovered another envelope, this time with a weird table. It was empty, but several squares were darker than the rest. The detective suspects the girl who will vanish next might be Madeline, Melanie, or Ariana. Can you figure out which one it'll be?
After studying the coat and the table, the detective realized it would be Madeline. One day, before a popular blogger conference, the security of the building where it was going to take place got a strange message. One of the bloggers is going to be kidnapped tomorrow. It'll either be Monica or Leslie. It was too late to cancel the whole thing. That's why the security officers decided to keep a close eye on the girls. During the event, the girls weren't talking to anyone suspicious. Everything and everyone looked perfectly normal. But suddenly, it became clear who was plotting against one of the girls. Can you figure it out? It was Monica. Look at that rope in her bag. She was going to get rid of her competitor. Aaron was preparing for his test for ages. He was sure his answers were correct and he'd get an A. But several days later, the teacher told the guy he wanted to talk to him. It turned out Aaron had made a tiny mistake and the professor couldn't give him the highest mark. But, the teacher said, if you manage to solve one riddle, I'll give you an A. Aaron wanted to have a good mark. Of course, he agreed. That's what his teacher showed him. After thinking for several minutes, Aaron answered, and it was correct. What did he say? In between jobs. Maria was walking home from work when she heard screaming. It was coming from the house she was passing by. The girl immediately ran in to help. She followed the voice, and it brought her to the basement. As soon as she walked in, the door slammed shut. Suddenly, three portals opened in front of her, but only one of them led to safety. The first portal was filled with giant poisonous snakes. In the second portal, there was a huge suspended rock. It would crash down the moment someone stepped in. In the third portal, five hungry crocodiles were waiting for Maria. Luckily, the girl chose the safe portal and managed to escape. Which portal was it? She picked the second one. Maria threw her shoes inside, waited for the massive stone to drop, and then walked away. Two men were playing chess. They'd already played five games, and each man had won three of them. How is it possible? The men were playing with different opponents, not with each other. Sarah and Liam had a son named Oliver. On Saturday, the couple went out for dinner and left Oliver at home. When they returned, the boy was nowhere to be found. The anxious parents called the police. A detective arrived and questioned everyone in the house. The babysitter said she'd been packing Oliver's school bag for the next day. The maid said she'd spent the whole evening cleaning the kitchen. And the cook said he had been preparing food for the next day. He was listening to music and didn't hear anything. The police immediately knew who was lying. And what about you? It was the babysitter. Children don't go to school on Sundays, so Oliver didn't need his school bag to be packed. 